and welcome back to Cello 101. Uh, today we are going to be working on perpetual motion in D major, uh, piece number nine in Suzuki Book One. <coughs> we're going to have a couple things to go over. Uh, we've got the initial one in D major, uh, we've got a variation, um, which will be kind of interesting to mess with, and then we've got tonalizations, uh, which basically will help you kind of figure out the feel between different keys, and then we can also work on it in G major, so we can actually start moving into different keys within uh, uh, within the musical sphere. So, uh, from there, let's go ahead and take a look at what perpetual motion looks like uh, just from the beginning without really hearing anything. Uh, looking at it through the entire thing, there's no accidentals, uh, we haven't hit those yet, um, so nothing to really pay attention for there. Uh, because everything's going to be nice and easy, nothing new in terms of uh, fingerings or anything. Um, the key, we're still in D major, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, we do have straight eighths throughout the entire thing, uh, so keeping a nice steady pacing, uh, keeping the same cadence together will be very important. Um, <clears throat> and then we can kind of see some of the same, um, some of the same melodical ideas uh, presented uh, a couple times through here. So, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and start at the beginning, and then we can play through and then start working on breaking it down. So, one, two... <laughs> easy, it's a fun tune to play, um, something that I definitely remember playing uh, when I was first getting into cello, and it's it's a staple. I really enjoy it. Um, so, looking through, we've got one... <clears throat> the first four bars make up a phrase. Um, the second two bars uh, are basically the same phrase with a slight variation, um, and then bars 9 and 10 are repeated in bars 11 and 12, and then we have a return to the uh, first motif uh, for 13 to the end. Um, so let's go ahead and play measures 1 through 4, uh, just to get an idea on the, the first melodic... Uh, the, the first melody in here, um, so that we can uh, kind of start breaking it down. So. Uh, one and two and three and four. <laughs> It's just working up the scale, um, so working up the scale, and then taking a step down, and then back up the scale, uh, and then to the open string. One of the big things to keep in mind, uh, especially as you're beginning, um, open strings can definitely be very twangy. Um, it is all about bow speed, control, and then placement uh, on the bridge, or uh, in relation to the bridge, I guess. Um, so you can very easily, uh, just looking at the fourth measure, or, ah, apologies, it is all about how you, um, how you go over to hit that string and then where, uh, if you're closer to the bridge, it's going to be a lot harsher. If you're farther from the bridge, it's going to be a lot easier to get into that string and then get a note going without that soul grinding squeaking. Um, so that is definitely something to keep in mind. Um, it's it's just something that kind of comes through playing. Um, you can pick up doing uh, string crossings. 
without that super aggressive, like raspy twang to it. Um, so looking at measures four and five, or uh, measures five and six, I apologize. Um, we have this theme. <laughs> And then we have the same thing repeated again in seven and eight, but with a slight variation. Um, so at that point, it leads us into the next uh, melodical, melodic uh, idea. Um, and that one's basically just a nice, simple run down uh, the scale. So. It's, it's definitely something that, uh, it just takes a little bit of uh, back and forth, uh, and then you'll, you'll be able to get it under your fingers without too much issue. Um, starting at measure nine, we are going into another uh, melodic phrase. Again, with that twang, that, that first crossing over, gotta pay attention for it. Um, <clears throat> So that, the, the first measure is a little bit of back and forth, there's a little bit of up and down, and then it's just a straight run up the scale uh, in measure 10. Um, and then the, uh, the, I keep wanting to say melodic uh, motif. Melodic phrase, there we go. That is, that is what I'm looking for. <clears throat> so uh, as we move into measure 11, we will have the same melodic phrase again. Um, it literally just cut and paste. Um, nice, easy, and um, it's just fun and bouncy to play. And then uh, measure 13 to the end, we have the uh, first melodic phrase uh, come right back, so it's kind of an A, B, A kind of a thing, uh, and then 13 to the end. So. Now, one of the nice things with this is since it's straight eighths, um, you don't really have much in way of um, you, you don't really have much expression in different note durations. So you don't really have a whole bunch of sixteenths and eighths and quarters and halves and holes tossed in there together to give it uh, flavor and um, to, to give it a, a sense of difference. So one of the things that you're forced to do is use your uh, dynamics to really bring about, um, to, to really bring out the, the melodies and to, to put things, uh, put more emphasis things on less things on others. So one of the nice things with this is since it is so um, so regimented and the the rhythm is so straight, it's it's literally straight eighth notes. Um, you have a lot of room for expression with the dynamic contrast, uh, piano forte, and and going from quiet to loud uh, to bring certain elements forward and then to to uh, make other things kind of more background. Um, as such, we only have one dynamic marking in this, which is mezzo forte at the very beginning. Um, and so you kind of have a lot of room for interpretation in there. Um, generally, I try to bring out the high notes, uh, and then as things descend, I tend to get a little bit quieter. And then as things ascend, I tend to get a little bit louder. Um, so let's go ahead and start at the beginning and take a look and just kind of see what the melodic variation that we have uh, that just kind of comes naturally. And so if you want to go ahead and play along with me, uh, I kind of ran through this a little bit fast, but we've got a couple different variations that I was wanting to get to uh, in today's lesson so that we have a couple different things to look at um, and a couple different ways to play it so that we can um, experiment with it a little bit more and then use it as a learning point. So let's go ahead and work on some of the dynamic contrast, uh, start at the beginning, and then just playing through and kind of seeing how it takes us. So one and two and three and four. <laughs>
that, uh, as you could probably tell, there was a lot of dynamic change that gave it a lot more flavor um, and gave it a lot more pizzazz, so to speak. So, uh, moving on, looking at section B, uh, we have our first variation, and this is going to be straight sixteenths, so quite literally you just double every note. <laughs> things to keep in mind, especially when you play uh, the sixteenths a little bit faster, is to not speed up as you're playing, um, because the, the tendency is... It, it just... it tr train wrecks <laughs> very quickly. Ask me how I know. Um, and so, Definitely keeping, uh, definitely practicing the uh, 16th variation with a metronome is going to be very, very handy. Um, and then also focusing on uh, trying to keep those um, dynamic swells and uh, decrescendos uh, in in mind, so that it's so that you have a little bit more uh, flavor to it um, as you play it seemingly faster. So moving forward, let's go ahead and take a look at the tonalization. Um, after that, and this is going to be for a new key, so this is something else that I was definitely wanting to get into. Um, we have been playing in D major, uh, this is in G major. The big difference is number of sharps. Um, in G major you have F sharp, and in D major you have C sharp and F sharp. Um, I do believe that is right. Okay, yes it would be <laughs> C sharp and uh, F sharp. Apologies. Um, so, one of the nice things with these instruments is they are very resonant, um, especially when they're in tune, especially when they're in good repair. Um, you can hear... this instrument vibrate on multiple strings at the same time, which is really neat. Um, this tonalization is going to basically um, kind of help you figure out the feel of the next key that we're going to be moving into, which is going to be G major. Um, as such, let's go ahead and just run through nice and slow um, the first line uh, of this G major tonalization, and just one, two, three... <laughs> to be the one, three, five, uh, and then octave of G major. Um, super foundational grounding notes within the key. Um, and as you can feel, the sustain and the, the drone and the sympathetic vibration within the instrument is just, it's there. Um, so let's go ahead and run line two, and then we'll see a couple different facets of the of the new key that we're going to be moving into. Just again, nice and slow. One, two, three. <laughs> It's super nice. It's a good way to settle into a new key, um, especially after having worked in D major up until now. Um, let's go ahead and hit line three really quick. And this one's just going to be specifically listening for, so playing one note, 
very in tune. Uh, double check it with a uh, tuner, not a metronome. It would be very hard to check pitch on a metronome. Um, but go ahead and check it with your tuner. Make sure that you are playing correctly. And then also, as the, the subtext says, pay attention for the ringing sound. So one, two, three. So with that, um, the first two notes are D, which is going to vibrate the sympathetic open D string below it. Uh, second two notes are G, which is going to resonate the sympathetic open G beneath it. Uh, then we have an A, which is going to resonate the sympathetic open A above it. And then we have a D, which is going to resonate the sympathetic open D above that. I hope you all have had fun today. I uh, definitely hope that you all have picked up some new things and definitely some stuff to work on this week. So uh, with that, I will bid you do, and uh, you all take care and have a good week.